the reward rejected. It was a stormy night. Violent wind shook the trees. In the flashes of the frequent lightnings, King Vikram could see terrible faces frowning upon him. He could hear the sound of weird laughter too. But all this could not make him give up his mission. He reached the old tree and brought down the corpse again. But as soon as he began to walk, the vampire that possessed the corpse said, O oh king, you deserve praise for your labor. But I hope unlike Shri, you will not choose to give up the reward of your attempt when it should come to you at last. Let me tell you about Shri. By listening to the story, you might find your burden a little lighter. The vampire went on. In the city of Ujjain lived a learned man who was poor. Shri was the name of his daughter. She was a prodigy. She could remember scriptures and answer questions from them quite spontaneously. Even more remarkable was her capability to compose poems instantly if she was given a suitable topic on which to do so. Her father presented her before several gatherings of scholars who at once knew her to be a genius. Her fame spread far and wide. She received welcome and reception whenever she went with her father. But she was never proud. She did not stop learning more and more. As she grew up, she became an exceptionally beautiful maiden. No wonder that several young men should decide to marry a girl who combined in herself brilliant scholarship and unusual charm. But she had her own choice. It was Chandrasekhar, a poor young man whom she would like to marry. Shri thought the gift of scholarship which God has bestowed on me should bring me some wealth some day. I will then marry Chandrasekhar. Soon the king of the land heard about the gifted Shri. He invited her to the conference of scholars which he held in his palace annually. In the conference, Shri impressed all by her scholarship and modesty. She also excelled all in composing verses instantly on topics given to her on the spot. The king heaped gifts on her while the elderly scholars blessed her. When the conference was over, the king told her, My daughter, I will like you to stay in the palace as our guest for a few days. This was the highest honor the king could show to any of his subjects. She was advised by her father and other well-wishers to accept the royal hospitality. She was given a luxurious apartment to live. A number of maids were at her back and call. The young prince often discussed with her issues of philosophy and showed great appreciation of her understanding while the princess played with her and taught her so many games. She accompanied them on the back of bejeweled elephants to lakes and temples. She enjoyed the performances of dances, songs and gymnastics sitting with the royal family. She felt that she had been born anew. The memory of hardship in her father's house seemed to fade away from her mind. Several weeks passed. She now desired to return to her home. But the members of the royal family were so much affectionate towards her that she found it hard to propose of her departure. The prince particularly showed her much courtesy and seemed to be learning many things from her. It was a moonlit night. Shri was strolling on the terrace of her apartment when the prince approached her. Shri, the night is sweet with moonlight and breeze. Can you recite a verse for it? asked the prince. It should not have been a difficult task for Shri, but she fumbled and could not come out even with a line. Never mind, said the prince. There should be the right mood for composing verses. But I have something more to tell you. I am fascinated by you. Will you agree to marry me? Shri was not prepared for such a proposal. My decision will be known to you tomorrow. She managed to say. The prince thanked her and went away. Early in the morning, Shri went to the queen and said, I have been here for several weeks. Kindly allow me to go back to my parents. The queen soon arranged for a palanquin and bearers who carried her and all the gifts she had received to her father's house. After a month, she married Chandrasekhar. The vampire concluded the story here and asked the king in a challenging tone. How could she prove so foolish as to refuse the prince's proposal? 
If she considered staying in the palace for a few days to be a great honor, how could she push aside a far greater honor that was offered to her? Answer my questions, O king, if you are intelligent enough to read Shri's mind. If you keep quiet despite your knowledge of the answer, you will fall dead. Your head shattered to pieces. Answered the king, far from being foolish, Shri acted as a wise young lady. Although she enjoyed her stay in the palace, she never forgot that the honor was due to her talent. Suddenly, she discovered that she was losing her ability when the prince requested her to compose a verse. To continue to remain in the palace would have meant the death of her talent. She had two loves, her own talent and Chandrasekhar. To accept the prince's proposal would have meant sacrificing both the loves. No sooner had the king finished in answering than the corpse gave him the slip. The king stood immobile for a moment. Then he made up his mind and turned and marched towards the tree he had left behind. Please like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Do provide your feedback in the comment section below. Thanks for listening.